Every year in mid-November, my office puts out the California Fiscal Outlook. In effect, this document kicks off the budget cycle for the next year, in this case, the 2012-13 fiscal year, which will start next July 1. We try to accomplish several things with our report. First of all, we update for the legislature the current year situation, any changes that have occurred, any budgetary solutions that didn't achieve the savings that we expected. In addition, we look out at the budget year problem. That is, when they come back in January and, and tackle the governor's proposed budget, what is the magnitude of the problem that they may face or have to correct before the end of the 12-13 fiscal year? We also like to look out beyond the budget year. So we take another four years in order to show the trends of spending and revenues to give the legislature an idea about, well, what would happen if we don't make adjustments to our budget? How does it look over the longer run? And finally, this year, our report has uh, importance because we're involved in the so-called trigger calculations for possible reductions in state programs in the current year. We are projecting that the state will face a $12.8 billion problem for the 2012-13 fiscal year. What that means is that the legislature will need to take actions that either reduce spending or increase revenues by almost $13 billion in order to end in the black at the end of that fiscal year. There are two components to the problem. First of all, we're forecasting the state will end this current year with a $3 billion deficit. That would then have to be addressed during the 12-13 budget process. More importantly, we're estimating that the state faces an operating shortfall, that is a difference between uh, expenditures and revenues, of almost $10 billion. So you put those two together and the state has a rather large $13 billion problem that it'll need to address. Now there's three main reasons for this rather large shortfall. First of all, we knew that when we passed the 11-12 budget for the current year, that we had a problem that was going to persist beyond the current year. And that is because we used a lot of one-time solutions. And once those solutions go away, your problem reemerges the next year. In addition, because we're forecasting that revenues will be lower than what we thought, we're going to have to make up some of that in the form of additional actions in the next year. And finally, we adopted some solutions in 2011-12 uh, that will not come to pass in our estimation. So for all three reasons, the state faces another large problem in the coming budget year. In addition to looking at the budget problem for the coming fiscal year, we like to look out beyond that to see what the budget trends look like. The following chart shows what we call operating deficits. That's simply revenues minus expenditure through the fiscal year 2016-17. As you can see from the chart, our budgetary operating deficit of roughly $10 billion for 12-13 is reduced slightly in the next two years to between 8 and 9 billion and then declines further to just over five billion by the end of our forecast period. Now, while these shortfalls are still large, this is on a base of about $85 billion in revenue, they're considerably smaller than the kind of operating deficits that we would forecast one year ago. At that time, we were estimating that the state faced $20 billion operating deficits throughout the forecast period. So the legislature, through its actions in the 2011-12 budget by reducing spending, and also because revenues have improved somewhat, these operating shortfalls have really fallen significantly. This year's fiscal outlook has important implications because of the so-called trigger reductions. When the legislature passed the 2011-12 budget, at the very end of the process, revenues were doing somewhat better than we had forecast. So at the very end of the budget process, the legislature and the governor agreed to, in effect, add $4 billion to our revenue estimates. However, knowing that there was some risk involved with adding that amount of money, they also adopted so-called contingent trigger reductions. That is, if the revenue did not come in as planned, there would be reductions in certain state programs in order to soften the blow of those revenue reductions. These re trigger reductions, in effect, are in two tiers. The first tier of reductions occurs if revenues fall at least a billion dollars below what we had planned. 
As you can see from the chart, there are certain departments that would bear the brunt of these trigger reductions. If, however, revenues fell more than $2 billion below what we had forecast, another set of so-called Tier 2 reductions would go into place. All of these reductions are in the education area under Proposition 98. These reductions are a little bit different in that the biggest one to school revenue limits are prorated depending on how far below $2 billion revenues fall. Based on our revenue estimates, we're estimating that the state would have to have $2 billion in so-called trigger reductions. Now, that's not exactly what will occur. That will depend on the Department of Finance when they come out in December with their own revenue estimates. The higher of the revenue that we forecast and that finance forecast will determine the magnitude of the actual trigger reductions. However, they can be no more than the $2 billion that we forecast. In effect, ours are a ceiling of how much the trigger reductions can be. For our copy of our report, California Fiscal Outlook, please go to our website, lao.ca.gov. For more information on this document, we have additional videos on our expenditure and revenue projections and on K-14 education spending. Thank you for watching.